Well, we're back on the Pet Stop on News 12 New Jersey, as local as local news gets. I'm Dr. Brian Voynick. You know, there's a great number of groups working to save animals, and some, as we've seen a bunch of times here on the show, work on one specific breed. We've got one of the biggest breeds represented on the show today. Yes, Great Danes need your help, too. So we've welcomed back the folks from the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League, and Mary Sini is uh, the New Jersey chapter coordinator, and Lori Zook does public relations for the group. It's great to have you on, Mary. Thank you, Dr. And Lori. Thank you. And you've got a big, uh, big star here <laughs> with a big set of lungs. I heard him as I entered the building this morning. What a baby. <laughs> you like right belly rubs? <laughs> Tell yes, us about this guy. Well, Remington was a uh, rescue that came to us about a year and a half ago. Uh -huh. He was the victim of a divorce, and he was placed in a shelter, and he was adopted from the shelter and returned to the shelter. And he, have ended, he ended up in rescue and um, was in a foster home for about six weeks before I adopted him. Oh, yeah? He's been with me since then. He's a real goofball, isn't he? He's a wonderful mm -hmm. dog. Uh, the, the funny thing about Great Danes, they don't realize their size. You, they still want to he be lap no dogs, idea. don't they? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. He loves nothing better than to sit on my lap. <laughs> Too much. They think they're little puppies. Yeah. Too much. Well, tell us the history of the breed. It's pretty interesting. Well, uh, Great, Dan Great Danes were originally bred in Germany, I believe, for boar hunting. Yeah. And um, I think in their in their breeding we have Greyhound and Mastiff to create the Great Dane. Interesting. And you know they, they apparently they used to crop their ears, they used to cut their ears so that they could stand erect because the boars used to mutilate their ears during this hunt. Uh, but obviously it's it is totally unnecessary today and it's yeah. actually a painful, unnecessary procedure um, to do. In fact cropping ears is banned in England and has been for years. Yeah. So um, this, this, this guy weighs about what? Remington weighs about 165. Uh -huh. um, he's not a big eater. Surprisingly, he doesn't eat that much. He eats high-quality dog food, and he only eats about five cups of food a day. And okay. that maintains his weight just fine. Good, good. So they don't necessarily have to be exercising a, a whole ton, huh? No, he, he exercises tw two or three times a day. He likes to run a little bit, and then he likes to lay on the couch for hours. Okay. Good. Uh, Lori, tell us about the adoption process. Uh, you know, who is suitable for a Great Dane? Not everyone. Not everyone. Um, to have a big dog, there are certain requirements, and people that are looking to adopt go through a screening process first, which generally Smart. means that somebody, such as Mary, will be phoning them to talk to them first. Okay. Find out if they meet certain requirements, such as a, a fenced yard, are the, the steps and doors, if they're um, wooden steps, are they carpeted or treaded so the dog doesn't slip and fall. Mm -hmm. So we want to try and get an idea of you know, wh who we're talking to and what we're looking at. And if they pass the, uh, that part of it, then it goes to a home check where a volunteer and their Great Dane will come out to your home and you'll actually get to see what it's like to have a Great Dane in your house and see you know, how big it is. Right. I guess it would be helpful to have a good-sized vehicle as well. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we want to make sure that people are educated about the breed, that they mm -hmm. really know what they're getting when they have a Great Dane in their house. They do slobber when they drink water. Sometimes after they eat, they can be messy. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that they're able to tolerate these. They like to go on the couch, <laughs> and they shed. So people when you say go on the couch, lie on the couch. Lie on the couch, <laughs> okay. exactly. Not numbers <laughs> one or two here. <laughs> no, no. <Okay. laughs> because that would be a big issue, wouldn't it? With Ab this absolutely. <laughs> when, um, when you have a Great Dane and you hear the sound of running water, you immediately <laughs> jump. Right. But um, they're not for everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and also the dogs that, that are being fostered, um, the foster parents of that dog generally try to see if that dog is good with other kids, you know, with the kids in the home, oh, sure. with other pets. Yeah. So ultimately when it's placed, we want to make sure that we make a very good, good match. Good point. Right. You know, we've had shelters and we've had rescue groups on the show. Why don't you just define the two for our audience? Well, shelters um, basically are kennels. Mm -hmm. And they certainly have their value. Um, a rescue group, we are a network of volunteers and of course we're always in need of more volunteers okay. more foster homes because unfortunately we always have more dogs than we have volunteers and available foster homes it's unfortunate that so many dogs are turned into rescue because people are moving they they're moving to an apartment the dog got too big the dog was never trained and now mm. they can't handle it so um, in a rescue group, we have a network of volunteers that evaluate the dogs, that work with the dogs, train the dogs, and mm -hmm. keep the dogs in their homes. So when you would adopt from a rescue, 
usually you're adopting from a home a dog that's ado adopting a dog that's been in a home situation right. where you can learn things about the dog that you may not learn from a dog that's coming sure. from a shelter. Sure, interesting. Now, Lori, we uh, re you recently got a celebrity endorsement, didn't you, from Sopranos? Tell us about yes, that. Yes, we did. Um, actress Drea Di Matteo of The Sopranos has volunteered to be our celebrity spokesperson. Oh, there she is. Uh huh. Yep. And, and, and this dog that she, we have pictured is uh, is up for adoption. Right. She's posing with Hooch, who is a Dane Mastiff mix, Sweet. and is currently up for adoption. Now, this dog uh, obviously has a skin problem. It looks like uh, generalized demodectic mange. Uh, and a, being a nine-month-old, there, there is a, a chance that this dog could, uh, could fully recover, uh, but it's a, it's a tough thing to battle. Right. The dog's been doing better for the last two or three months in foster Good. care. So. Usually, as their immune systems start getting stronger, they can, uh, they can help fight that. But uh, good, she's a good lady, huh? She's really she had a, a lot of heart. fun, yes. Good for her. And I think that we have another picture of, uh, of another beautiful Great Dane that, uh, uh, that she has. And uh, it's, yes. it's almost an albino, and you mentioned that this one happens to be deaf. This one happens to be deaf, mm -hmm. and the person that adopted her um, taught her American Sign Language so that she wow. can understand hand signals. Isn't that great? Yes. Okay. So you mentioned a little bit about volunteers, and you're in need of volunteers. Um, what kind of, is, does it necessarily have to be somebody who could bring a Great Dane or two into their home? No, okay. not at all. Um, we look for volunteers to help um, publicize mm -hmm. um, our rescue by holding what we call meet and greets, where we actually go to maybe a pet store, um, where we set up a table with information. We might sell merchandise for fundraising or hold raffles and basically educate the public about the breed and mm -hmm. about the rescue and um, let them know that there are dogs that are in need of adoption. Great. So volunteers, volunteers do um, many things. Sometimes they help with phone calls, answer questions, Mm -hmm. um, not just foster, even though foster homes are always, we're always in oh, need of foster sure. homes. Right. Yeah. And they don't even need to have a great Dane. I mean, we need help sometimes doing things with computer databases. So you don't have to have a Dane to, to want to volunteer and help sure. out. Mary, how about a phone number and a website you can give us? We have a website in New Jersey. It's www.magdrl hyphen nj dot com okay or easier yet you can just go to news12.com and we'll give you that website and our phone number is 973-334-1628 all right well that's wonderful keep up the great work thank Mary. you so Lori, much thanks for coming thank you, on thank this you. big guy huh really taking up a lot of the stage <laughs> oh i think i'll there wake we up go. now <laughs> <laughs> good boy. okay folks now it's time to take a break uh, we're going to actually first talk about our pet of the week. Here's Mookie, and Mookie is a Chihuahua mix. We go to the other end of the spectrum from East Brunswick that was rescued from our friends over at the Animal Rescue Force, at ARF. And uh, they were recently a guest, in fact, on the pet stop. But this isn't your ordinary pup. Believe it or not, Mookie loves to sit at the table reading magazines and catalogs. He's come a long way from the mean streets of Staten Island, and that's where uh, he was rescued from. So congratulations, Mookie. You are our pet stop pet of the week. Well, if you want your pet to be Pet of the Week, send your pictures to P.O. Box 6558, Edison, New Jersey, 08837, or email those pictures to the pet stop, all in one word, at news12.com. Still to come, D. Romaho will be here from the St. Hubert Center Welfare Center with a pet in need of a good home, so please stay with us. Pet stops can be right back on News 12 New Jersey, as local as local news gets.